All right, guys, yes, appreciate you coming. We're looking forward to a really good game, uh, being exciting games on national TV, and we'll get to play against uh, a historic program uh, that's won national championships, had Heisman Trophy winners. I um, think it's a great opportunity for our players to prove that they can play in a big, uh, big light and a big schedule against a really good team. Uh, so we're just trying to prepare as best we possibly can. All the way down to the weather today, we're knocking that down to get game time temperatures, looks like. So that would be good for us too. But um, we're going to be excited about playing and uh, can't wait to see our guys go out and compete. Questions? After the last game, you talked about BYU as a power conference team, like in your, in your opinion. Like, can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, you know, power conference, obviously it's the six power conferences. But when you look at BYU, I mean, what they've done, Again, they've had national championship teams. They've had Heisman Trophy winners. They've always been on the national stage. And resource-wise, they have everything that a power conference school has. Um, uh, you know, so I mean, that in my mind, that's what they really are. Yeah. And um, what stands out about them this year? Like, because you said, like they've had a lot of success. It seems like I don't know if they're like rebuilding by their standards this year. Or what do you well, I think when you look at them, uh, especially the last few years, it always starts with defense. They're a tremendous defensive football team, uh, one of the best defensive teams in the country right now. I know they're in top 20 in just about every category. Um, there's not many games where they are giving up points, and uh, they have great speed on defense, great size. Uh, they're always really physical, strong players up there. Um, I think they do a tremendous job. I was aware of their strength program and those things. They, I think they do a great job of developing players too. You know, when they get them there, obviously they do a great job developing once they're there. So uh, that's number one. And then, uh, you know, I think they're a little bit like us. You know, they've they've kind of found a quarterback now. You know, the freshman quarterback that's playing for him. I really, he's very impressive. He can run. He can throw. Um, he, he looks like he's got a lot of instincts about how to play the position. He's made them a much better offensive football team uh, since they went with him. After, I mean, you guys got the win, but giving up the 42 points like against their offense, what, what do you feel like they do well on offense? That you guys have BYU? Been, uh, well, again, yeah. Yeah, again, they're big up front. They're going to be very physical. They're going to run the ball well. You know, I mean, that's what they do. And then you have to be able to guard against the play action passes and those things get the ball thrown over your head. So, number one on defense, it always starts back with the same thing. You've got to slow down the running game. And that's true every week for everybody. So, it's, it's no different for us. We, you know, we need to get some negative yardage plays, uh, put them in some third and long situations where they're not as comfortable. Um, but, you know, it's hard to win third down when it's always third and short. And so those two th things kind of go together. You know, we need to play the run better, and we got to get them in third down, third and long. Uh, I asked you after the last game about, you know, the dual threat quarterbacks. And this guy, um, it seems like he's more of a pocket passer, isn't he? Is that really well for, for your defense, trying to, you know, not having to lose contain? Yeah, yeah I, I would say that uh, he, he runs well. Uh, you know, when he gets out of the pocket, he can hurt you. Uh, I don't think that that's really necessarily what they want to do with him. Uh, so in those terms, yeah, but um, he can still move around pretty well. Yeah. What were some things, Coach, you focused on during the bye week? You know, Adam, the big thing was just get our guys refreshed. You know, it's been a long season. We started really early, if you remember the zero week thing. So we've, we've been at this longer than most teams. And so I felt like at this time, it was really important for our guys to get some days off and get away. So they've actually had quite a few days off here. I want to get them refreshed mentally and, and obviously physically. And I think we're about as healthy as you could ask to be at this time of the year. Uh, I think Ronnie LaForce is going to be back in this game for us. They got word today, so that looks positive. Uh, Trey Abraham is back from his mom's funeral and, and a concussion, so we're hoping to get Trey back here also uh, ready this week. So those are the biggest things. And then some things we did in practice was just to keep – I wanted to keep – moving Josh Adkins' process along, uh, you know, for the future. So we did some things this week of uh, allowing him to call his own plays in practice. You know, uh, in essence, we gave him a formation with five plays and let him choose the plays and did good on good. Because that's where we'd like to get back to, you know, eventually and what we were doing with Tyler last year. And I thought he handled that really well. And, uh, you know, it's still a process with, with Josh growing as a quarterback. And so we want to take the opportunity last week, we had a week off to keep that going. What does BYU do defensively? You know, they're a three-four team basically, but they'll mix in some four-down stuff. Um, you know, they do some interesting things coverage-wise. They really do a nice job of mixing their coverages up. 
Uh, I wouldn't say that they're a heavy blitz team, but they, they bring it at opportune times and uh, do a nice job with their blitz package. But they are so good up front, you know, they can get pressure with three and four without bringing, you know, a, a lot of people out of the secondary. So it's going to be a major challenge for our offensive line uh, and for Josh. You know, we got to get the ball out on time. You can't hold the ball against these guys because they're, uh, they're really strong up front. BYU's been able to schedule like most of the independent schools. Something that I, I don't know. I think is for like being the fact that they can schedule pretty much whoever they want. They still get Army and the smaller independents on their schedule. Is that helpful for you guys? You know, as long as you're independent, being able to get them on the schedule to keep BYU yeah. on the schedule. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of people I'd like to play rather than BYU. It'd be a lot easier. I know that, but uh, independent games are hard to find. Though. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. Scheduling as an independent has challenges, and obviously BYU's dealt with that quite some time and um, but again they have the history and the tradition and it's an attractive place to play so I'm sure they have an easier time than we are right now um, but you know I think looking at our future schedule I'm really encouraged with what Mario's been able to do with our schedule I know next year is a very challenging schedule for us but um, I still believe there's some great opportunity games in there against Mountain West teams and and other games that I think you know are going to give us a chance to be pretty good and we return this whole football team just about, especially on offense. So, you know, I, I think we're good there. And then beyond that, I really like our schedule. I, yeah, I think we've done a good job of putting one together. Coach, being on ESPN2 again, what are some of the biggest advantages of that? Biggest thing is in recruiting right now. You know, um, this open date came at a very opportune time for us. Because of that new early signing period, it's real important that your coaches get out on the road late here in the season. So this open date enabled us to get all of our coaches out recruiting last week. And uh, again, with the early signing period, I think that's crucial. So that, that was big having the open date here. Um, playing on ESPN, I think, kind of reinforces that. You know, all of our coaches were out last week. Now all those guys that our coaches talk to or set up visits with, they get to see us play on television a little bit. And that, that never hurts. Anytime you can play on TV, it's a recruiting tool, and uh, and it's good for our university. You know, there's going to be a lot of people going to tune in to get to learn a little bit about New Mexico State University as an academic institution that, you know, may never have known about us. And, you know, that's what happened at the bowl game. You know, we introduced ourselves to a lot of potential students, and that's what I'd like to see our football program become as an avenue to help this whole university. And that's, that's why you have an FBS football program, and that's why you want to have a successful one so that it can help promote – not only the athletics, but the whole university in the city. Have you had a player, like a, other than the quarterback, that has been uh, as productive as Jason Huntley in the last couple of years? It seems like now it's, whether it's either um, a kickoff return or he's had a 100-yard receiving game, plus he's a decent running back. Like, Yeah, I think uh, – you know, Jaleel was one of those guys. You know, Jaleel was so productive, he got himself drafted last, all last year. All -purpose guy. Oh, it's an all-purpose guy. Uh, you know, Julian Edelman would be the only other one I had, you know, because he actually returned kicks for us and things like that well, at Kent State. But he, he'd be one of the few that has had the year that, uh, that Jason's had. I think the big thing is with Jason, and he's kind of epitomizes our offense, is he has gotten better as the year's gone on. You know, from the beginning, from the first game till now, I mean, it's he's gotten light years better in all areas. And our offense has improved that way too. And uh, that's what you want to see from your football team. You know, that's what we were able to do in 2017 that got us to the bowl game. We kept getting better week after week after week. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we've gotten that done this year as a whole team, but in some areas we have. Coach, kind of building off what Jason said too with Atkins, have you had a quarterback who – went from where he was day one to where he is now, like Atkins has progressing during the season? Well, I think uh, a couple of things with Josh. Number one, he, he's really bright. He understands the game. Um, so you can do, whenever you have a player with that intelligence, you can do a lot of things with them. Um, and the other thing is he's willing. You know, he wants to be coached. Uh, there's a lot of guys that have talent or have intelligence, but they don't put the extra time in that they need to. You know, Josh, you watch his film on his own, meets with Coach Holbrook extra, uh, you know, that he initiates, that coaches don't initiate. And that's what has enabled him to get where he is. You know, and that's a that's a character thing. That's a mentality that, you know, that's, you know, what we're looking for when we go out and recruit. And we thought we had that in him when we signed him as a freshman quarterback. And 
you know, I think the red shirt year was really good for Josh because he got to sit and learn and watch things from that perspective. And then, uh, you know, he's obviously taking advantage of his opportunities here this year. Ken, do you have any questions for Coach? Um, yeah, just one. I, you, you talked about the last couple of weeks before that last game about how badly you guys just needed a win and to get things back on track. Have you seen a difference after finally getting that one? Yeah, I think so, Ken. You know, winning cures a lot of things. Uh, you know, and I, I will say this about this team. They, we've got a tremendous group of, of kids here. I mean, they're great. You just enjoy being around them. And, uh, you know, we haven't had the season that we wanted to have, that we anticipated having. Um, but it hasn't been from a lack of effort or, you know, anything like that. I, I've really enjoyed these players, and I think they've worked really hard. We've had some unfortunate injuries and things like that that – set us back. But I think that win just, you know, took some air out of the balloon, for lack of a better term, for them, you know, took some pressure off of them. Uh, now they can just relax and go play and enjoy playing these these last two games. And there's a lot to play for in these last two games. Obviously, like we said, this one's on television and, uh, you know, the seniors and everybody get to compete against more of a power conference school. And then, you know, obviously Liberty will be your last football game as a senior here playing at New Mexico State. And those that game's always big for any senior. So. Uh, you know, these are going to be two big football games here, too.